Hi, beautiful people. How are you? I hope you're having a great day. Well, I guess Lucy has decided that when I sit down to do a video, it's time for her to lay in the chair. I got a new blanket. I found it at Home Goods. I had a dentist appointment yesterday and was running very early because in the morning I got some blood work done. So in between the blood work and the dentist appointment, I went to Home Goods, just a window shop. But I passed by that blanket. It's kind of a navy blue. Don't know if you can tell on camera. But I thought it was beautiful and something my dog's toenails would get caught in. And picked it up. 12 bucks. I was thrilled at that price. Anywho, in my last video... I stated I wasn't feeling very well, and guess what? The next evening, it rained and snowed, a very wet snow. one of self-presentation, I discussed what self-presentation is, how catastrophizing can hurt us, and what we can do. In this video, part two, I want to discuss suppression. It's an emotion regulation strategy that's defined as pushing unwanted thoughts, emotions, memories, and more out of conscious awareness so that we're not thinking about these things. But thoughts are never gone. Try this. Tell yourself right now to not think about a river. And what do you start thinking about? A river. It's hard to not think about something someone tells you not to think about. And research calls it thought suppression. There's also something called emotional suppression. If I told you not to be anxious in a particular situation, you'll probably be annoyed because just turning that off automatically isn't going to happen. It's not an easy thing. So it won't work. And suppressing something emotional is far more difficult to do than suppressing something neutral, like thinking of a river. Thought suppression and expressive suppression are conscious efforts. We make a choice to suppress these. Research on emotion suppression is often focused on expressive suppression. When we suppress our emotions on our faces, that's an expressive suppression. Today, I'll cover both of these types of suppression strategies, but we'll focus more heavily on expressive suppression. Here we go. Thought suppression is when we try to ignore or control intrusive thoughts that maybe we feel are distressing. For example, people with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, experience intrusive thoughts. The problem is that when we try to push those thoughts away or attempt to, the thought will return which leads to more distressing thoughts, and it becomes a vicious cycle. 
when we try to push distressing thoughts away, it's a controlled conscious effort that will drain us of our mental resources, especially if it's repeated over a period of time. But pushing the thoughts aside will eventually become unsuccessful. You may also notice that when you're feeling stressed or tired, you won't have the mental resources to push the thoughts aside. But we have all encountered intrusive thoughts from one time or another and have tried to suppress them. This is when mindfulness is helpful. You can practice noticing your thoughts and emotions while keeping a non-judgmental point of view. So you would acknowledge that thought and remind yourself that it doesn't control you. You'll notice that the thoughts occur less often over time. Stress reduction helps too. This would include deep breathing, movement, getting enough sleep, and meditating. The most efficient method of learning to not use thought suppression is through a process called acceptance. In the case of an intrusive thought, that would mean accepting the presence of the thought without trying to suppress it or change it in any way. This often includes mindfulness. This doesn't mean you accept the situation that you're trying to suppress, especially if it's a difficult one from your past. It means you accept a thought as being present in the moment. It's there. Okay. You don't try to change it. And then you let it go. Expressive suppression is when you hide your feelings so much and prevent the expression of an emotion. In most cases, people are good at reading the emotions of others. In particular, people will pay attention to their facial expressions, body posture, and vocal intonations. Now, there is research that shows that men and women vary. So, in most cases, men are just less expressive than women are, but not always. Expressive suppression, then, is an attempt to hide your expressions of emotion from another person. So like when I was taking those curtains down, my feelings were obviously strong because my husband saw it on my face. I didn't suppress those feelings. I was obviously feeling pretty miserable. And research shows that hiding our emotions from an intimate partner can create havoc on our relationship. This situation might be different when our boss is berating us for something that isn't even our fault. And suppressing our real emotions might be beneficial if we want to keep our job. But in our relationships, we need to let our emotions show so they can read them. Because if we try to keep our cool during a conflict, or like my situation of doing something difficult, we can disrupt an important communication process. In a 2021 study of 427 heterosexual couples, researchers found lower relationship satisfaction when expressive suppression was used because it interfered with the coordination, cooperation, and connection needed to manage relationship challenges and to sustain healthy relationships. Do you avoid expressing your thoughts by decreasing your facial expressions? When you mask your facial expressions, you're trying to hide your emotional state 
And that can cause you to not experience that emotion. Expressive suppression not only suppresses negative emotions, but it also suppresses positive ones. Negative emotional and psychological effects occur when you reduce your facial expressions by controlling positive and negative emotions. The problem is that even though we are outwardly suppressing our emotions, our negative feelings and emotional arousal is not decreased. Those feelings are still there deep down our heart rate and blood pressure will increase and our sympathetic nervous system debates our fight or flight. When we're stressed, this activity increases our heart rate, our blood pressure, digestion, enlarges our pupils to let light in and improve our vision and urination and sweating is decreased. This process appears to be constantly activated in fibro, but when a situation is toxic or causing you distress, your sympathetic nervous system is on high alert, and it also affects our immune system. This is where the parasympathetic nervous system can come into play to return things to normal. Expressive suppression requires more cognitive power to suppress, and without expressing your thoughts and feelings, you end up not receiving the sympathy and social bonding that you would have otherwise. Now, there are times that we should hide a facial expression in situations that call for it, like laughing during a situation that isn't funny, for example, someone slipping and falling on the ice, or a real estate agent who just receives an offer on a house. She has to maintain professionalism, so she's not going to show her happiness in front of her client. But these moments are not what I'm talking about today. The fear of trusting someone with your feelings can be a source of real conflict inside of us. This will prevent clear communication with the people in our lives. The problem is that you may become angry and resentful and could trigger the conflict you wanted to avoid. This avoidance strategy can become a habit that is done automatically. The problem is that hiding your emotions can actually intensify them and eventually anger results because you can no longer hold it in. Holding back our emotions can cause us more stress and add to our physical symptoms. So what can we do? It takes time to learn to share your feelings, but it doesn't mean it's okay to vent your emotions in a negative way. Actually, the longer and more often you vent your feelings and thoughts, the longer the emotions and thoughts will remain, which isn't what we want, right? However, research does state that expressing negative emotions can be beneficial. That's why support groups are so helpful. And feel free to join my Facebook group. It's linked below. It's a private group, and we can be there for each other. Mindfulness techniques can activate the parasympathetic nervous system and can help us to be aware of the present moment right now, right now and experience things as they happen. When you practice mindfulness, you'll acknowledge your feelings and accept them, but you don't have to express them right away. You know what they are. You acknowledge them because 
they're real to you. Maybe you don't want to start an argument, and that's a good thing. So waiting until you can explain your emotions, your thought processes in a way that is non-confrontational is a good thing. And you do that by exploring your role in the situation. And just know that everyone will experience these kinds of situations. Discounting your life situations will invalidate your identity and sense of self and even prevent you from achieving your personal goals. We don't want to be rude to people. So using I statements and not you statements can help. And that's not going to happen overnight either. It took me a long time to get to where I stopped saying, you hurt me, this is your fault. Or instead of saying, you're leaving me out, say, I feel left out. Shutting down is not the answer. You'll end up feeling frustrated and resentful, and that will affect your relationship. So respectfully expressing your disappointment about a situation is important. Otherwise, it will appear that you're accepting the situation as it is. This can be more difficult in a work-related situation, however. You'll have to trust your instincts and make sure that you're speaking in a non-confrontational way. But just know that talking to someone else that you trust can help you get a hold of what you're really upset about. And therapy can be a safe place. When I was first diagnosed and in so much pain, and the grief of losing my former life overwhelmed me, So I had intrusive thoughts when I learned about acceptance. It changed my life. So I hope this made sense to you. And I hope you learned something. I know there was a lot in this video. I send you gentle hugs and support. Love you. I was obviously feeling pretty miserable 